Welcome back. He's here again. He was here a few months ago. And since that time, a lot of water has gone under the bridge. One Meguna Meguna. He was a, an advisor to the Prime Minister. And he was dismissed the Moi way. Welcome. Yes, I didn't know I was dismissed. <laughs> or suspended. The Moi yeah, way. No, it's okay. It's both. It's okay. Yes. Now, maybe you should start by telling us a, a brief history about you, your relationship with uh, the Prime Minister. Why, when did it begin? Because for you to be appointed an advisor to him, he must have known you quite, quite a considerable period of time. Mtegi, I thought we were not talking about that, but in any event... Yes. Yeah, I've known the Prime Minister personally. Uh, that is personally, since 2006. Before then, I just knew him like any other Kenyan politician. When you got employed there, how did it happen? I was offered an employment, and I accepted it. So after that? I worked, and you know what I did, up to the time they announced the suspension. I think Kenyans are aware of what I did. Uh, I, I don't know, you, you, you probably wouldn't have, you, you have talked and written at length mm. uh, about uh, ODM and about the, the Prime Minister. Uh, since that time, it's in, in, the, in, the, in the newspaper and even given uh, press conferences. I think, I think, Mutegi, mm. um, my writing and my public pronouncements have not been the work that I was doing. Obviously, you don't advise in public. Yeah. Yes, when you meet with the Prime Minister to give advice, you advise under closed, uh, you know, behind closed doors. So that's not a public issue. Uh, but just by accepting the job I did, I did not cease being Meguna. I did not cease being a citizen. I did not cease being an intellectual or a thinker or an analyst. So, of course, I continue to participate like everybody else in the discourse that was happening uh, in the public. And that was perfectly okay because uh, the job I accepted was not on condition that I stopped thinking, that I stopped participating as a citizen of Kenya on national issues, or any issues for that matter, provided, of course, that uh, they didn't compromise the interest of my boss and, uh, and decide of the coalition. And I think everybody knows that there is nothing that I did or have done that did that. So, um, but what I did when talking behind closed doors with the Prime Minister is not something I will discuss because I think everybody understands that there is time for everything. So what I do with you behind closed doors, my advice I give you, I cannot disclose it to the public unless, of course, we agree that that was going to be disclosed. But if I have instructions and I go to a meeting and I have a brief and I'm supposed to advance an interest at that meeting, of course I would do that and I've done that during the constitutional review process, when we went to Kampala during the ICC, um, in many pronouncements in the newspapers, um, the interests that have been advancing have been not just been the interest of the Prime Minister, but the interest of ODM and the interest of the country. Because at the end of the day, anything I have done throughout my life, I'll tell you, has been consistent with public interest. Anytime I find interest that conflicts with public interest, I will always side with public interest. And I have no apologies to make on that. Because that is what we were supposed to be doing. Change, reform, progressive fundamental transformation of society is about improving the livelihoods of Kenyans. And if you do anything to advance that interest, you should not have any apologies to make. So I, I don't seem to understand why if, 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 what, anyway, what you call public interest mm -hmm. is not necessarily public interest according to you. Because if you're advising the Prime Minister mm -hmm. and uh, ODM, mm -hmm. 
that obviously the, the public interest of ODM and the, the Prime Minister obviously it is not the same public interest of his uh, rivals, political enemies. It's not the same. No, actually, uh, public interest would have to be the same. For example, you know that all Kenyans wanted a new constitution. Almost all Kenyans. So you know public interest is the interest of the majority of the people. So if you advance that interest, you know you're advancing public interest. And ODM's interest cannot be inconsistent with that. And if it is, uh, and they have not said so, then they are engaged in, uh, in deception. PNU would never come forward and say, we don't want this new constitution, and they never did. So there, the interests converge. And as you recall, during the constitutional review process, we all said we wanted a new constitution. The only thing we disagreed on between ODM and PNU was the system of government. We all want a new constitution. They wanted a, a mongrel system, the one that we had before. And we wanted a parliamentary system. Later on, they said they wanted a presidential system. But it was not the classic presidential system that we now have. And when we said, ODM said, that it's either a pure parliamentary system or a pure presidential system, and we later on agreed on a pure presidential system, there was convergence. And that's public interest. Then you look at the quality of the system that you're going to have. The Bill of Rights is there. Devolution is there. Those are key pillars in this constitution that the public was demanding for more than 40 years. They wanted devolution. They wanted human rights to be respected. They wanted a system governed through constitutionalism not the whims of an individual. And that's what is in the draft. Now, you have then to align uh, leaders' actions, utterances and actions with what is in the Constitution. So if you find a leader doing something that, that conflicts with that, then you know the leader is off base. And as, as a person who was hired because of my skills, because of my intellect, because of the ability to look at issues objectively. Otherwise, you can't advise. It has to align with the Constitution. And any time you find conflict, then you'd have to have serious discussions whether or not you should continue working. But as you realize with my case, that discussion never happened. Uh, nobody ever called me to a meeting and said, look, we sent you here or there, and you did something in conflict with what we agreed. That has never happened. Uh, which is which, which, uh, very, very interesting, but mm. there is a columnist in the Standard Sunday Standard who wrote that um, he had written in that column that uh, the Prime Minister was not uh, whatever. He said negative things about uh, the Prime Minister in his column. Mm. And you responded and it said the opposite. Right. After now that you have been removed, mm. you are agreeing, kind of agreeing with that columnist. I never ever agreed with Ongalo. Yes. And I will never agree with him. Yes. Because he's unfair. Even to, he's unfair to himself, he's unfair to the Prime Minister, he's unfair to issues. That's not how I discuss issues. Mm -hmm. I, I have never been doing these things for the Prime Minister as a person. I, I mean, th that couldn't have happened. I've been doing these things because of high ideals, as I have told you. We in this country have wanted equity. We've wanted equality. We've wanted discrimination to end in this country. We've wanted good governance. We've wanted democracy. And these are the things that I've been fighting for. When we met, me and the Prime Minister, I was already Miguna Miguna. Yeah. He did not make me. He found when I was already practicing law in Canada, I was already doing these things. You used to read my pieces before I met the Prime Minister. So my pieces were not informed by the Prime Minister as such. We, there was a convergence of interests and of ideas. So when Ongalo, uh, and I don't want to discuss him in detail, wrote an article criticizing the Prime Minister unfairly, of course I would defend the Prime Minister if he's criticized unfairly. The same way I would defend any Kenyan if criticized unfairly. Um, he thinks now we are on convergence. Where? Where? On what issue? We are not agreeing on anything because he thinks that I am 
criticizing the Prime Minister. I am not. I am standing up for issues that I believe are important. I'm standing up for ideals that are important. And if the Prime Minister tells Ongalo, which I am not sure whether he has done so, that he disagrees with me on these issues, then we can have that discussion. I have not had the Prime Minister say, I disagree with Miguna. Has he ever said that? I'm yet to hear that. But 